past few years, you may have heard a teacher or a school staff member use the term social and emotional learning, or SEL for short. While SEL sounds like a complex idea, it is simply about teaching children the social, emotional, and awareness skills they need to grow into successful adults. Emotions and relationships, the social part, are important because they affect how children and adults learn. If our children learn social skills at the same time as academic skills, they will have better outcomes as adults. They will work well with others, deal with conflict and stress, achieve goals, and have overall better life outcomes. In a recent study, children who participated in an SEL program had a 6% higher high school graduation rate and were 11% more likely to graduate from college. Keep in mind, this topic is not new. For years, people have focused on supporting this type of learning with children, but they may have used other words or activities. SEL work today is being led by CASEL and their evidence-based approach to the subject is what we will be referring to in the rest of this video. For more information about CASEL, access to their research or other information, please visit CASEL.org. That's C-A-S-E-L.org. In this video, we will break down the parts of SEL and give you a few tips for keeping this learning going from home. The main goals for SEL are understanding and handling emotions, setting and achieving positive goals, feeling and showing empathy for others, creating and keeping positive relationships, making responsible decisions. SEL is broken down into five main parts. Once we understand what these parts are, we can come up with ways to check in and encourage SEL. Number one, self-awareness. Self-awareness is understanding what your thoughts and feelings are and how they may be affecting your behavior, where these feelings come from and how to express them kindly. For example, your child might complain about butterflies in their tummy or a stomach ache. Self-awareness helps them understand that they are really feeling nervous or fearful. With self-awareness, they can examine their feelings and start to understand why they have them. From there, they can work to manage those feelings. A child who is not self-aware may just feel sick to their stomach and ask to stay home. As a parent, being honest about how you feel can help them learn those emotions and feel normal. Number two, self-management. Self-management is the ability to take control of one's thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. Self-management is understanding who you are and how to use that information to manage feelings and reach goals. This is how your child handles themselves in any situation. This can mean changing negative thoughts to show more positive outcomes. Another part of self-management is control over one's physical reactions. This means creating space between emotion and the response. For example, when a child gets angry, sometimes they react by hitting others. As they practice self-management, they can have some space to control those reactions. For another example, a ninth grader is scared about starting high school. She remembers learning from her teacher that she can change how she feels by thinking differently about the situation. So instead of worrying, she chooses to think about it as a new adventure. Number three, social awareness. Social awareness is taking the view of and understanding others, including those who come from diverse backgrounds. A great question to start building social awareness is, how would I feel? You can use characters in books or real life examples, but ask questions like, what is she feeling? What might you do? How would you feel in that situation? This will help build your child's awareness in themselves and teach them to empathize with others. Empathy means the ability to understand and share another's feelings and is a big part of social awareness. Number four, relationship skills. Relationship skills is the ability to build and maintain healthy relationships with diverse people and groups. This includes communicating, listening, cooperating, resisting social pressure, dealing with conflict well, and seeking help when needed. When we have good relationship skills, we can work well in a team and build strong, lasting friendships. Building strong social awareness can help your child create deep and meaningful relationships. 
When they can understand and name their feelings, they can create space to imagine what it is like in others. Number five, responsible decision-making. Responsible decision-making is the ability to make good and polite choices about your own behavior and interactions with others. For many families, this can be a challenge. It can help to take a step back and support your child towards the goal of making responsible choices for themselves. This can mean giving your child space when safe to make mistakes and understand consequences. To support responsible decision-making, you can ask questions like, why did you choose that? Was that the best choice? What could you have done differently? For example, your child is being disruptive in the classroom. The teacher could simply send them to time out or to the principal's office. Or they could work with the child to understand why this is a problem. What is the teacher's experience like? How would you feel if you were trying to say something meaningful and being interrupted by one person? What can you do to let the teacher know you understand how they feel and that you are sorry? Social and emotional learning is very important to your child's development. Keep in mind that not all learning is academic. 